The method relatively new calisthenics athletes use to learn the planche extremely fast in those crazy success stories you hear online is of course not only due to one factor but multiple put together. There are three main reasons some athletes are able to do this and I found this out by actually DMing the athletes. So this is first hand information from people that were able to learn planche in a year, touch front lever in a few months, crazy stories like that. And from all this information, I found out some key patterns to how these people are able to progress so fast that you guys can implement into your own training to progress much faster. First reason why some new athletes are able to progress extremely quickly is because of physical attributes. Now by physical attributes, I mean their physical stats, you know, their height, their body fat percentage, their muscle mass, all these attributes together go into and affect how well you're able to naturally excel at learning the plant. And that's because all of these physical attributes affect one of the key factors that determines your plant strength, and that is body weight. If you're taller, you'll most likely weigh more, more muscle mass, you'll weigh more, more body fat, you'll weigh more. I think you guys get the point. So that's why a lot of people that are lighter spend a lot less time gaining the full planche. What if I told you there's a way to get around some of these physical attributes that are negatively affecting your planche training and progression? And there's a method that you can use to really increase your strength faster without being in such of a disadvantage. So that introduces us to our first case study, Elias Page, a taller athlete that was able to unlock crazy hard calisthenic skills in a short amount of time. Hey yo, what's up y'all? Elias Page here to talk about some skills that I got very quickly and skills that I progressed in very quickly with after first getting them. So there's four skills that I would say I, you know, apply to this the most. One arm pull up, iron cross, Hephaesto, and Entrada de Angel. So I was training Entrada de Angel for around six months, Hephaesto for maybe four, Iron Cross also four and one arm pull up for round two. So when I first was training these skills, I was a lot smaller. I was ranging from being 5'7 and like 127 pounds up until 5'10 and 140 pounds. Something you may have noticed about all these skills is the fact that they're all vertical. And there's a reason for that. I'm not like your average advanced calisthenics athlete who's 165 centimeters and under. I'm actually on the taller side. Like currently I'm 180 centimeters tall. When you're training lever skills, you have the advantage, the disadvantage of your height as a lever, which has more gravity affecting it, makes skills harder. But with vertical skills, you don't have that issue. You will have square cube law and a bunch of other issues, but you remove one of the big ones, which is directly affected by your height, which is the lever. So how can you guys implement this? Well, first of all, you're gonna try and get lighter. So you're obviously gonna try and get rid of that body fat that isn't helping you with the planche or learning any of those other really hard skills. That's only gonna speed up the progression if you're able to get lighter, as we mentioned. The second thing is you're gonna work those vertical pushing and pulling movements. For the front lever or the pulling skills, I would suggest weighted pull-ups. These are great exercises, of course, that are in the vertical plane. So again, if you're taller, the lever is not gonna be an issue for you. It's gonna be more about your raw strength, your raw shoulder strength, and there's gonna be a little bit about leverages, but overall, this is just gonna be you pulling vertically. So I've seen some incredibly strong street workout athletes that just do weighted pull-ups and weighted muscle-ups, and they're able to unlock the front lever almost for free. So now for the pushing side of things and learning the planche, I would suggest hands stand push-ups, a vertical pushing movement overhead. And now the handstand push-up isn't gonna strictly unlock the planche for you. That's because the planche, unlike the front lever, relies a lot more on the straight arm strength, the bicep tendons and the triceps, keeping arms straight a lot more than the front lever does. I feel like it's a little bit easier to do those things in the front lever, but with the planche, you'll still be able to really transfer that shoulder strength to your planche training. So as long as you do your handstand push-ups and work on the straight arm strength as well, you're gonna really speed up your progression and become closer to one of those athletes learning the planche in like literally a year. The second reason why some new Castings athletes are able to learn the planche within a year is because of a concept I like to call volume freaks versus the high intensity guy. Now let me explain. These are terms I picked up from my recent conversation with Rafael Paz. If you haven't seen that conversation, go look that up after this video. I'll link it at the end in the description. And I have two perfect case studies of people that learnt the planche and other advanced skills within a year, but they both did it very differently. First we have Flixes or Trayvon, and I'll let him introduce himself. Hey guys, my name is Trayvon. I am 16. I am about 5'5". Five five 
and I weigh 130 pounds. I specialize in push. I've been training for about a year and three months now. I started in October 5th, 2021, and that's around where I started Planch as well. I started training Planch on October 5th, and I finally unlocked it on December 18th. After that, I started training Planch Press. This was like one of my favorite skills after I unlocked it. It's still on my page. If you like scroll all the way down, it was just a random session. After like three sets of uh, holds, I just attempted it and I just did it. And I was like super hyped when I first started training planche. I started with tug just like everyone else. And then after about two weeks, I went to advanced tug and I just did a whole bunch of holds um, for like a certain amount of time. And then after that, I didn't do as much straddle. I just kind of went to like full planche attempts. And then after like a lot of attempts at that, I just was able to unlock it. Now, as you can see, Trayvon is more of a high intensity guy. That's because he learned the planche mainly doing attempts. How was he able to do this? And how's this high intensity? What does that mean? So in the context of calisthenics, high intensity just means you're using more of your body weight. The more of your body weight you're holding up by yourself with your raw strength, then that's high intensity. So 50% of your body weight with a band, that's low intensity than just doing the full planche with no band. For some people as well, because because of their physiology, their tendons and ligaments and connective tissues doesn't take that much of a beating either because of their weight or how quickly they're able to recover their tendons. Some people because of their tendon insurgents, it can either be harder or easier for the body to recover and repair the tendons, especially due to different kinds of blood supply to the tendons, etc. So a lot of factors go into this, but I found that those people that have those kind of attributes, physiology, well, they become high intensity guys. So now you guys know about the high intensity guy and that might be you but if that's not you then you might be a volume freak so now let's explain that with the perfect case study as i introduce you to jix also known as nico and i think the reason behind me getting a planche so fast is that i just i train smart like i do my planche workouts in a smart way i'm trying to like get the max out of it if i don't feel like training anymore i'm gonna stop and take a rest for like uh, maybe whole week if i feel something weird around in my arms like tendons or muscles i'm just gonna stop like i'm really paying attention to those things so i don't get injured i'd rather like chill out for a week instead of like uh, one month also i like using a lot of bands i'm doing always a uh, progress with the bands uh, like high volume reps but well, what i actually think the most important thing in like getting a planche so fast is like first do your like first of all before anything do your conditioning properly properly and strengthening of course like you want to get the bicep tendons uh really strong because you you want to avoid injuries in those areas because they're there they can be fatal for your progression a lot so i do i did a lot of that like for i did that before i started training planche i did that for like two months and I use the collagen just to help me with uh, those things, like to get my tendons stronger. And yeah, it did help. So eccentric uh, movement uh, helps a lot with strengthening your tendons. Also isometric do the same, but they're less effective a little bit. He also talked about conditioning his connective tissues and taking a collagen supplement. If you guys don't have a collagen supplement yet, you need to get one to boost how quickly you're able to recover from your plant training, especially on the straight arm days. This is the collagen supplement and collagen builder I use. It's from Vivo Life. Hopefully you guys can see that. I picked this one because it has higher profiles of the amino acids that build up the connective tissues. So it's a lot better than other collagen supplements out there because you get more of the stuff that's actually gonna build up the tendons rather than just getting random amino acids that build up any old protein. So if you wanna have a look at that, check the link down below. Guys, I have lied in this video. So there isn't actually two groups. There's not just the high intensity guy and the volume freak. They're not two different groups, it's actually a scale. So you're actually going to be somewhere on this scale. So it's likely that you're going to benefit from both the high intensity and the high volume. For most people, you should be doing both. Now, the last reason some athletes are able to learn the planche extremely quickly in times like a year is because of mindset. And with two more case studies left and some of the most important case studies that I've seen, let me introduce you to Nathan. Why I think uh, you picked up the skills so quickly? Uh, for me, I think that my speed of progression is surely not due to nutrition. I think that my genetics and my sporting paths have a lot to do with it. Because before I um, discovered the calisthenics, I did boxing and a lot of bodyweight uh, strengthening. Uh, the last point, I think that during the year 2022, I had a lot 
of time uh, to train and I make people who talk me a lot of things and even more I would say that the key is to love what you do without worrying about your speed of progress if you stress yourself it's really really bad for the mental key thing here is enjoy what you do enjoy the process and it's also a similar story with Dean but slightly different I, I was doing Tatex for maybe three months and I was progressing quickly but I saw like Victorian on reins and at the time I didn't know how exactly how difficult it was but I had just got on reins at the time and I wanted to like you know train it so I started training and I, I didn't know what I was doing to be honest I didn't I, I didn't have any bands um essentially I was just doing like looped reins and attempts and I was kind of just getting a feel for the movement but even with like the the worst like way to train it possible I ended up progressing like really fast and within about I'd say four or five months of training I got like my first decent hold and about the six month mark I got um some that would actually I'd say would count as like maybe like decent form. At the end of the day, you also need an aspect of intuition. Is this exercise really working what I want it to work? Am I feeling the muscle activation? There's a big part of feeling in the training. So not only just following down what's ever on your phone app telling you what to do, there's also an aspect of, okay, am I feeling it? Is it working? Can I feel it work? Am I feeling the muscles? That's a big aspect. And Dean is a great example of this. In summary, use vertical pushing and pulling movements to sort of hack some of your negative physical attributes. Train smart, so you might be a high volume freak or you might be a high intensity guy. So if you are one of those things, try and optimize how you're training and switch up your training every now and again. And lastly, love what you do and do what feels good. Use your intuition. Guys, if you're struggling with a planche, I have an announcement for you. I'm now officially starting online personal coaching. So if you're struggling with your programming, you can't unlock advanced stuff planche, you're struggling with the shuttle planche, and you want to get to full planche, then I'm going to be able to personally help you. So go to the link in the description, go to jackpastance.com, fill out the application, and I'll get back to you by email on how I'll be able to help you achieve your goals. So thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So now you guys know how exactly real people were able to learn the planche and other advanced skills in less than a year. But what you don't know is how exactly do you apply this to your own training in terms of making a program well in this video I tell you how I give you exactly how long you should be holding depending on where you are in your planche journey